Good morning, everyone. So, uh, yeah, thanks for joining this session. Uh, we have our first presenter for today. We'll be having actually six speakers today. So, uh, Tillman is uh, the first one coming from TU Delft, and he'll be talking about how to advance, uh, uh, yeah, basically advancing the program synthesis uh, within Julia and uh, about the package on the herb.gl. So, let's give it up for uh, Tillman. Yeah. Does this work? Yeah, okay. Hi, I'm Tillman. I'm, as said, from TU Delft. I'm a PhD student there. And today I'm going to talk about a library that we uh, developed, which is called HerbGL, named after Herb Simon, the founding father of program synthesis. Mm. And I'm going to talk about how to, uh, how to teach programs, how to program, actually, with program synthesis. So why should you listen to me? So first off, wouldn't it be great, like all of us love to program in Julia or in Python, respectively, wouldn't it be great if Julia just does it for itself? Like you this process can be uh, come tedious at, si at times, so you just give it a description of what you basically want. Julia magic happens, and suddenly you, like your uh, satisfying project uh, program uh, is spat out. Well, this is still a far-fetched dream. Um, this is the task of program synthesis. So what do we do in program synthesis? First off, uh, we need two ingredients. First off, we need a description of what we want, which we call a specification. This can be all sorts of things from examples, like uh, this is the very common um, um, example from Excel that you might know, so this funny little dot at the bottom uh, part that you can then drag down uh, and then auto-completes everything. This is uh, like an application from 20 years ago uh, for program synthesis. And the second ingredient that you need is a grammar, which basically describes your language that you can use. If you're not a computer scientist, um, so you have symbols on the left-hand side, and then you can iteratively and recursively uh, substitute these things, and hence generate more and more programs. S is an abbreviation for string in that case. Um, but this grammar can be anything. This can be Python, this can be Julia, but this can be also something highly specialized like this. Or it can be something totally different, which is not a program at all, like uh, differential equations or whatnot. Um, and then we are able to generate programs like this. So this is then a program that we can then introduce, uh, apply to our inputs, m uh, check whether it matches our outputs, uh, and so on. So why Herb? The field of program synthesis is an absolute mess, in uh, 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 to put it euphemistic. So every so uh, program synthesis has been around since the early 60s. It's one of the older topics in uh, classical AI, so to say. Um, and every single research group is basically cooking their own soup. There are so many methods out there which are just straight up not usable by anybody else. They're in absolutely obscure programming languages, like Java, for example, um, um, and they're very hard to run on anything, uh, or are even proprietary, for example, for Microsoft or whatever. And the second issue is that benchmarks that you want, when you want to actually do something with them, um, they're in even worse <laughs> uh, programming languages, like Stack and whatnot, uh, languages that you never heard about. Um, so we made an effort um, to come up with a framework where you can actually um, use existing synthesizers, run them in your benchmark or your problem in a, well, human readable form, uh, which you will see in just a second. So HerbGL is a Julia framework that provides a unified and uh, universal approach for program synthesis, which lets you like define what a program is, uh, what the problem is, and so on. Um, we uh, implement or we give a few building blocks which then help you to implement your own synthesizer or re-implement existing ones. And third off, we provide a bunch of state-of-the-art benchmarks and synthesizers for your kinds of problems. So, how does this look like? Um, how do we do this? So this is a, a way of uh, defining your problem. Um, the sheer fact that we are able to put this on a single slide, um, which is basically not able to, uh, which you're basically not able to do with any other program synthesizer, and is actually readable if you can actually understand what you're doing. So I basically just translated the pro uh, the example that we've seen earlier on into a little bit of code. So it's basically the exact same grammar. We define our problem, then we add a constraint, which I will explain in just a second. Then we introduce our iterator, and then we just call synth, and we have our program. That's how simple it is. Okay, but how? So basically what we do is we de describe a bunch of utilities. So basically, what is a grammar? What is a specification? How, does, uh, how can this look like? What different forms can this take? Um, and um, how to run different uh, your generated programs. So how to interpret Julia, how to interpret Python or whatnot. And we also provide a bunch of benchmarks. 
And then we also provide an efficient uh, search method for this, so how to efficiently enumerate this, and Julia helps quite a bit with this. There's two ways to go about this. So there's this program space opened up by the grammar, and there's two ways to go about this. So there's constraints which you can introduce, which basically narrow down your search space. So for example, if you have an addition, there's symmetry, uh, symmetry breaking, which basically, if you have, because addition is commutative, you don't have to explore the same program twice. On there are like different search methods which can facilitate this or accelerate this. Uh, for example, heuristics, this can be an LLM of your choice. Um, I'm a little bit opposed to LLMs, but this can be <laughs> any uh, a naive heuristic that you can actually, uh, that you want to use. Um, and then you can synthesize a program. So what do we have right now? Um, we have an efficient representation, an efficient enumeration of programs already existing. We have a working constraint system. If you're coming from constraint, uh, from constraint programming, um, this is actually a very cool novel system which we're going to publish in a couple of months. Um, and then we have an, uh, a, a cool set of building blocks to implement your own synthesizers in a few lines of code. What's next? Um, we have to re-implement a lot more synthesizers, actually. Um, uh, that are already existing and known to be well working. Um, we need more applications and benchmarks, which I will get to in just a second. And then we are also currently working on a smarter integration with LLMs, which is not just calling ChatGPT to try to solve your problem. Um, if you want to grow herbs yourself, we have a marvelous garden. Obviously, it's a garden where you can grow herbs. It's funny. Um, if that sounds interesting and you're tired of writing code yourself, or writing differential equations yourself, or basically anything um, uh, like modeling yourself, we can try to do this for you uh, if you have a specification of doing this. So if this sounds interesting, or you want to contribute, or you have cool applications that you would like to see in action with this, uh, or you're just generally <laughs> curious about herbs in general, but also specifically herbjl, um, then please come and join. Um, this is us. Um, I'm one of the developers, and there's like 40 more developers, or has been uh, more than 40 more developers over the last one and a half years, which we're developing this. There's also Sebastian in the crowd here, and so on, if you have any more questions. Also, uh, we have a big QR code if you want to check out our website. Uh, it's <laughs> we've been <laughs> trying to make this as presentable as possible, um, but if you have any more questions, you find contact details over there, and so on. And if you have any questions, I'm open for that as well. Thank you very much. All right, any questions? Awesome. Thank you for the presentation, it was very cool. Um, so your work seems kind of more fundamental at the moment. Uh, you mentioned the applications. So what you're doing right now with the Excel thing is like, you know, splitting a string on a dot and getting two elements. It's nice that it works, but do you have any cooler applications in mind that you're working towards? Um, or are you just more interested in the fundamentals? Yeah. Uh, so where this actually shines is, like, this is not going to de develop your entire code base. This is not going to work. I mean, maybe it will. <laughs> but um, where this actually shines is if you have, um, I don't know, what you may know as test-driven development, like if you have a actually good description of what you want, this will be able to generate it in for smaller-ish functions. Um, so we recently talked, for example, to a bunch of people at, uh, at CERN who have real struggle of finding developers, for example, uh, for, their, for their obscure programming language, because like, you need people who know physics and know programming, uh, for example. Um, and the crux about this is that you, like, you, don't know, you do not care about the programming language, actually. Like, it, it doesn't matter. Um, you just search for it, and uh, if you're able to, then you're able to. Um, yeah, and this works-ish, I don't know. Um, for, for smaller programs, yes, um, but for anything, basically, if that's right. cool enough. Thank <laughs> you. All right, we have yeah one more question, and then uh, we'll switch to the next speaker. Sure. Just a quick question. Um, why do you split up uh, your herb into so many uh, sub-libraries, like herb search and so on? Um, yeah, we had numerous discussion whether to put this as a big, big monorepo or not. Um, I think the reason for now is to, ha uh, to have this in a modular way is just the development stuff. So we have a lot of different projects and a lot of students working on different subparts of it. And it's just a lot easier when you have like, so last, uh, so in the last three months we had like 20 working at the same time on this. Um, if you want to manage much better uh, if you have this in a modular way, so you can actually 
uh, try to merge just the subcomponents and not everything all the time. Um, sure. Uh, yeah, let's give uh, the <laughs> final round of applause for uh, Ilman. Thanks. That was a great presentation. Yeah.